Hi, this is Jason with RPC Electronics, and this is Lesson 3 of the Creating an Eagle CAD Library. Uh, real quick, I just want to say that sorry it took so long to get this next lesson out. Unfortunately, Hurricane Sandy blew through and kind of threw everything into a tailspin for us here. So I'm just behind on everything, so I'm getting caught up. So, Okay, uh, what we see right now is the symbol that we drew in the last lesson, and this is the this is what would actually show up on the schematic and, uh, and and of course we have all of our pins that we added everything that we would connect to uh, in the schematic itself now the next step is to create the footprint of the of the part and that's the part that will actually be shown on the circuit board so that includes all of the solder pads and any kind of markings that would uh, indicate the orientation of the part on the board so before we get started on that, let's jump back to our, our data sheet. And in the data sheet here, I've pulled up the dip, uh, the dip eight drawing or the, the uh, mechanical drawing for the part. Uh, keep in mind this part has a dip version as well as is available in a surface mount version. We'll we'll do the surface mount version in another video. This uh, for this tutorial, I'm just going to concentrate on this on the through hole part uh, since that's the more common one. Uh, for for hobbyists anyways okay there's really four dimensions that we're really worried about uh, when looking at when we're looking at this this particular drawing uh, one of them is the and since it's an IC we can talk about length versus width and in this case the length is indicated by capital D and if we look down here in the table capital D is 9.27 is the typical there's also a minimum and a maximum length, 9.02 and 10.16. And the reason for this is the manufacturing of the part. Sometimes not each part each part is not identical to another. They, there can be a little bit of variance. But in this case, it's not really that important because the package size is not as important as the pin spacing. Um, we uh, after we look at the after we look up the length of the part, we can see the width of the part is E1. And that E1 number is 6.35 so again if we use the typical numbers that's kind of the in the middle number between the minimum and maximum and that'll be perfectly fine for what we're doing the other two dimensions that we're worried about is the spacing between two pins on one side so the adjacent pins or a pin adjacent to another lowercase e is the is the dimension for that and that's 2.54 that's a standard spacing for a a narrow dip uh, part that 2.54 equates to 0.1 inch, which you may be familiar with hearing that. Uh, 0.1 inch, that's the same as a, as a standard breadboard or perf board. It's on 0.1 inch spacing. That's also the same as 2.54. It's just, and, and we can see that in the table, we have the metric numbers as well as the inches or the, uh, the standard uh, English. And if you look here, where 2.54 is over on the English side, it says 0.1, so we know that that's true okay that's the spacing between the pins now the spacing between the rows is also important and since we're on a 2.54 grid the spacing between the two, the rows is EA down in the table that's 7.62 and that is the equivalent of and this is for a narrow IC a narrow IC is always three times the pin spacing so in this case for, for a uh, 0.1 or 2.54 uh, uh, millimeter spacing and we can prove that by bringing up the calculator and putting in 2.54 times 3 and you can see we get 7.62 so we know that that's true so that's our spacing that we need to worry about okay so let's go back to the part or go back to the uh, library creation and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this icon up here. And this is the device, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, the package uh, icon. And that's going to pop up and it's going to ask us to give it a name. So in this case, um, what I like to do is use a similar naming convention, 741 op amp. And then I'm going to add dip 8. And that tells me that this is the package for a through hole dip 8 package. When we do the SMT, instead we'll put SMT8 so we know the difference and we'll, we'll do that in another video. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to ask, do you want to create a new package? Yes, we do. Okay, and it's going to bring up a grid. 
and you can see we have an origin here and this origin we're gonna want to try to keep that in the center but the very first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and get my pins laid down so the easiest way to do that is to go in and change our grid and we know our grid is 2.54 millimeters so by doing that I've now created a grid that is exactly 2.5 millimeters uh, away uh, each each uh, crossing is 2.5 millimeters and we know we have an 8 pin part so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the left and there's a pad and we're going to grab that and it by default gives us this square pad uh, for an IC I like to use an oval pad like this and also the uh, drill size is important as well and that, that is one other thing we want to check so the width of a pin is lowercase b and in this case it's 0.46 inches I'm sorry 0.46 millimeters and here we show the drill as being 0.8 now that would be fine because that's it's perfectly uh, perfectly big enough and the pin won't won't be, you won't have a tough time getting the part in it may be a little bit big we can go a little bit smaller um, I'll go about 0.7 that gives us a little extra space but it's not too big as well and it's not too small okay so now we have our our drill set and we have our pad selected the shape we're gonna go ahead and lay down the eight eight pads that we need to put down for this part so we'll do one two three four remember we're gonna skip over three to seven point six two and then we'll do five six seven eight now you'll notice that I laid these down in a U fashion I, I that's how I did it because the software is gonna automatically name each one of these pins successively or in succession and that's the way the numbering goes on the IC itself pin one starts in the top left corner counts down you go over and then you count up like a U. So now that we've done that, our spacing we know our spacing is correct. The um, now we want to change our grid and we want to change it to half of 2.54. So all we need to do is is if you if you can't do it in your head, which I'm not very good at, I'm gonna pull up my calculator. I'm gonna do divide by two. It's 1.27. So I'm gonna change this grid to 1.27. And the reason I did that, I'm going to use my, my group tool, select all, use the move tool, do move all, and this is going to allow me to move everything so that the origin is now dead center. And that's important because when you're placing the part on the board, you want to know that your origin is centered. So when you put it at a specific uh, location, you know that that part is exactly centered at that location. And that location is based on this origin here okay one other thing that we want to do is we want to create an outline that will be shown on the board uh, to show the IC now there's a couple different ways of doing that the, the way I like to do it is to actually use well we're going to use the wire tool or we can sometimes refer to as the line tool and we've got multiple layers to deal with there's the there's the um, T place which will actually lay it will draw a, a, a diagram to show which way the part should be oriented the problem with that is is that when you create your silk screening it's going to create silk screen that's going to paint over top your pads and that's something we don't want so what I like to do is come all the way down and use the T document and what T document is going to do is it's going to actually show us where the part will be but it won't paint uh, silk screening over top the uh, it won't paint it paint over top the uh, the pads so I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start right here and we can change our width if we want to this is uh we'll go a little bit a little bit uh, bigger uh, 2.54 and I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna draw this in now when I get to here I'm going to click, and the reason I'm going to do that is I would like to use our curved line function so I can create a notch. And this notch is going to show which way is pin 1. The notch always indicates pin 1 is the top left pin. Okay, so now that I've done that, I've created 
I've created our, our, our footprint uh, with our pads and also the drawing of the, f of the body of the part so now we know which way the part would be oriented. Now if you were to create a silk screen you could either manually do it when you're creating the board or if you run a script it will create a silk screen but it will not create a silk screen with this T document line so what you might want to do is set we're going to set our grid a little bit smaller remember we're at 1.27 so let's let's type 1.27 into our calculator divided by 2 that gives us 0 0.635 0 0.635 and the reason I did that is I want a I want a grid that's a little bit smaller that isn't touching the pads now I can use our line tool again but I'm gonna go back to that T place and I'm gonna use that to overlay what we've already done as far as documenting this but I'm only going to do it where it's not touching the pads so you can see them just adding these little dashes in between and then I'm also going to do the ends and the dashes again on in between the pads now if I go and I turn off if I turn off the T document layer you'll see that what our what our silk screen will actually look like okay one uh, actually two last things to do and we want to make sure we have T place selected we're going to use our name tool or the text tool and we're going to use that name function again and we're going to go down here and we're going to select T name the other thing you want to select is vector for your font and the reason for that is the vector will keep the font looking exactly like we're typing in here now like we're putting on on the uh, on the diagram or I'm sorry on the footprint because the uh, for some reason proportional will will self adjust itself and there will be times where it will adjust the font and it will be much bigger or much smaller than you expected so I find vector uh, works the best I'm gonna take this I'm gonna add that right there and when we change the name of the schematic it's gonna automatically change this here as well so we don't have to change it on the footprint that will happen automatically last thing we want to do is do T value and we'll use our text again and we'll do LM741 and we're gonna put that here and again if you change the value in the schematic it's gonna automatically change it here on the footprint okay last thing to do is we're gonna go and we're gonna change we're going to change the names of these pin of these pads so we're gonna use our our name tool and you'll see that P dollar sign one is what has been assigned so we just want it to be one two three four five six seven and eight and the reason we'll do this will make more sense in the next video when we marry the two together one tip though if I had placed this one pad I could have went ahead and renamed it number one without the dollar sign and the P and as and if I copied it and kept copying it instead of doing P dollar sign one two three and so forth it would have actually went from one to two to three to four and I would have had to rename them but I I did that anyways just to show you what Eagle would normally do but that is that's a tip that you could use for uh, for doing uh, it's, that's very helpful if you're doing a package that uses a lot of pins and you don't have to go through and rename every single one of them you can rename the one and then copy it keep copying it and it will automatically keep the naming convention that you chose okay that's uh, pretty much it for this part and in the next lesson we'll marry the two together and we'll have a complete package so we'll see you then in the next uh, lesson